Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Fiona and I am a full-time artist. And on this channel, I like to take you with me on my artistic journey, whether that means leaving the studio to go see cool art exhibits, working on projects in studio, or discussing topics like we're going to do today. I've been a full-time artist now for the past three years and I've learned a couple of things along the way. So I thought I would share with you five simple tips for selling your work online. Just wanna take a moment to acknowledge that it can be really tough and scary selling your work online. So high five to you if that is what you are doing. So these tips are in addition to you having a website and a shop set up and a social media presence. And I really hope it will help you sell more work. Let's get into it. Tip number one, use an artist label. What is an artist label? If you've been to a museum or a gallery, you'll typically see a plaque with information about the piece that you're looking at. This will include name of artist, title of piece, year created, size of the piece, materials used, and if the work is for sale, you will see the price. You may also see a short description about the piece or perhaps the process the artist used to create it. When you post on social media, I believe you should include an artist label with your work. You can probably drop your name since people are on your account, they'll more than likely know it's you. But the piece that's important is actually to include the price. This is a little bit of a controversial topic. Some people don't like including the prices of their piece and want people to inquire about it. But for me, I found that I've sold more work when I've included the price in the post about it, whether that's on Instagram, Facebook, or even on my website. I find that taking away barriers for your collectors is going to be a key for selling your work. So taking away that extra step of somebody having to message you to ask for price or details makes things a lot easier. Over time, you will also have people who are interested in your work that will start to understand your pricing and think, okay, now I'm going to save up for that piece. And bonus points if you're able to include a link to your website where they can buy it directly. Tip number two. Show multiple angles of your work. This is very important for showcasing your work online. Yes, it's important to have it straight on, very, very clean, but we should also show details, side views. If it's framed, people will wanna see what that looks like, possibly in situation for scale. Scale is so unbelievably hard to capture online. And yes, in your artist label, you are giving someone sizes, but most people won't get up and go measure their wall. So showing them a photo of your art piece in situation will really help them visualize what this could look like in their home. This is another step that involves taking away the mystery for your collectors. Don't make them message you and request more photos of the piece. Show as much detail as you can up front and it should help to secure a sale. Tip number three, make sure your work is ready to hang or display. This is a seemingly small thing, but you would not believe the amount of people that message me about works on paper asking if it is framed, about canvases asking if there's a hanging system on the back. Make it easy for your collectors. Have all of that done, say, it is ready to go on wall. I know especially with works on paper, a lot of the time people will purchase it and then never get it framed or perhaps they'll purchase it and ask me about where they could get it framed, how to frame it. It's a complicated step for a collector. So by removing that, you potentially could secure a sale over something that simple. Tip number four, offer free shipping on national orders. Story time for me. When I was first selling artwork on my website and I had a shipping calculator, many of my collectors would stop in the checkout process and would tell me that the shipping calculator was estimating really high shipping costs. And this is for people that live locally to me. And they would ask, is there a way for me to come pick it up or can you come drop it off? So what I found was that if I took away the shipping calculator, but then in general added that extra cost to the piece of the work, it made the checkout process smoother. And you might be asking yourself, well, how much is that gonna be? And that's something you're gonna have to work out on your own. It could be as little as $20 for small works, or it could be significantly more for larger pieces. It's good for you to kind of have an estimate in your head of what shipping costs would be regardless. 
Tip number five, accept different types of payment. Me, on my website, I was only accepting PayPal and I would get messages from people saying, I don't have a PayPal account. So by opening it to credit card, I found that the checkout process has been much easier. You can have your preferred way of accepting payment, whether that's PayPal or credit card, but I would keep an open mind to accepting different ways that is preferred by your collector. If you're in a conversation with your collector, you should definitely ask them, what is your preferred way of payment? With that said, please, please, please do not accept check from any scammers that are emailing you. That is a story for a different time, but the check will bounce. Please do not do this. Okay, friends, if you've made it this far in the video, I am going to offer you a bonus tip right now, and that is create a mailing list. Why create a mailing list? I would say this is the most direct way to get in touch with people who are genuinely interested in your work. I would say there is a level of intimacy in being in somebody's inbox. And by having them sign up for a newsletter, you can give them updates on what your latest pieces are and what is available to purchase. Remember tip number one, mention the pieces with that artist label in the email with a link to click through for them to purchase and it will make sales go a lot, lot smoother. So what do you guys think? Are these any tips that you're going to use? Do you have other tips that you want to share with the other artists? Please do so in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up and please subscribe if you're interested in more art content. I do hope to put out more of these artist tips videos as well as sharing with you exhibits, projects I'm working on, any art related content. If there's anything you would like to see, also, please leave a comment of what that would be. For now, from my studio to your home, please stay well and stay inspired, and I'll see you next time. Bye.